it's November 8th. Yeah, 8th, 2020. Uh, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been sure we're like the episode number 576. Uh, uh, and hey, folks. Breaking news. The next president of the United States of America will be Joe Biden. And vice president-elect is Kamala Harris. The first black Indian American woman vice president. I mean, you, you just got three ticks there. Yeah. Uh, let's just, just, yeah. For fuck's sake. Check, check, check. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, okay. Two presidents like, <laughs> go. <laughs> we have the first, first black president. Ooh. One tick, still male, just black. Hey. He didn't have a mix in there to, to add any more ticks. Well, he technically was a mix, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> no, we do. <laughs> that sounds bad. But <laughs> no, nothing that would provide another tick, right? Uh, no, not yeah. really. You know, I mean, in the in the in the um, minority tech book, no. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, yeah, because yeah, it, it's just it. That portion happened, like for all the years before. Yeah, I mean, last election there was the possibility that we could have had our first woman president, which we still haven't hit. We we only have women right. president, but but still we could have had that. But for some strange reason that that election day, I was just. I have no idea what happened. Wow. Uh, my forehead hurt from my my forehead slapping. I mean, I, for the for those of you who have been who have been keeping up with the podcast, last week we had a flashback to our twenty sixteen election coverage. You you know all the opinions from that. But well, here's the thing: is like we did that flashback to to see well three ninety from twenty sixteen. I listened to it on the way to where I am today on my road travel. And we recorded it before the election. Oh. So we did not know when we recorded who was going to be president. Ah. We had some presumptions. We had preferences. Mm -hmm. um, but we also kind of talked about possibilities. Mm. And honestly, the four of us at the time were all on the same side of who we wanted. But none of us were feeling super confident, which is really strange to hear now, like to go back and listen, because I yeah. I had thought we recorded it after ah. and we all knew who won and what the outcome was. And then I was like, oh, shit, no, this is a pre-record because David was going to be out of town or on vacation or something. So yeah. I think we did two episodes in one day and the second of the two was that episode. So it was mm. the Sunday before the election. Oh, wow. I just want to reiterate. Uh, last, last time for, last for what, it, what it means, like, like back in 2016, the popular vote. I mean, besides the fact we had, a, had an amazing turnout of, of voters this year, this year. It, it, amazing. A lot of it was early voting, mail-in uh, uh, voting, as well as uh, uh, polls on election day. But so we we hit for both both candidates. They they breached the seventy million vote mark each. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Biden ended up getting to almost seventy five million. It was like seventy four million and change. I don't. I don't remember. It's the currently. Year. It's currently sitting at seventy five million two hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred forty nine. Okay. Sorry. Popular Just, vote. I, in, yeah, the popular vote in twenty sixteen. Sixty five million. 
853,516 votes went to Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump got 62,984,825 votes. Yet, Donald Trump was the winner because of an archaic system that we still use for some unknown reason, probably more of just because nobody's bothered to do anything about it. Fucking electoral college. Which personally shouldn't matter nowadays. Well, <laughs> should just yes, it. <laughs> yes, it is a very interesting and controversial topic or subject. Um, it is archaic, and I will like be. I will admit to that right now. It is a very archaic system. I get why it was a part of a thing like mm -hmm. in the day, yeah. but we have grown as a as a country since it kind of became the thing. And I I agree that it is time to kind of like really look into it and see like what what like. Um, if it's really necessary, mm -hmm. you know, should it just be the popular vote or should it be something else? What that something else is, I don't know. I, I think but... it should just be the popular vote. And one of the reasons why I say this is because it actually equalizes the entire United States because some states technically have more power towards the election of a president. So, like, uh, California has 22 electoral votes. Uh, Texas has a large number of votes. I can't remember all the specifics. 38. 38. California has 55. Um, oh, yeah, 55. PA has, has 20. Uh, we know that. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> these arbitrary numbers... Or are these numbers not arbitrary? There's a reason why each state has electoral votes, which I believe is based mm -hmm. off the last set census. This is one of the reasons, folks, to actually do the census. This last year for the census was super easy. You could easily get a, a number, type it into the, the, the census website, put in your information, done, over, done with. That's it. Super, super easy. You didn't have to mail anything or call a number or anything like that. You do it online. Or waiting for someone to come to your door or any of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you perfectly, super, super easy. Census, based off of the census, is how the electoral votes are then, then put out. Usually they, they tend to be the same one. As long as the president gets 270 uh, electoral votes, they are declared the winner. Mainly because that make, ensures that a majority of of the electorate. Mm -hmm. um, popular vote can even that out because those smaller numbers are kind of worth are worth more than how things could balance out. Because depending on how how many votes there are in each each state, if you take their number of elect, take that total number of votes divided by the uh, electoral college or electoral votes, the balance of oh only this many per electoral vote in this state, and it, and it can end up varying. Well, going with that with the pop, just straight popular vote, you can see a broader number bigger transition like right now with the with the balance of of votes it is obvious with 74 million versus 70 million votes Biden is definitely the winner period mm. based off of popular vote this mm. is actual fact uh, you know the, the the electoral votes actually match the popular vote meanwhile the last the uh, back in 2016 the electoral votes did not match the popular vote. Mm -hmm. So that's where one of the big problems is, is when it comes to the electoral college is the electoral college should be reflecting the actual 
popular vote, but it doesn't. So that's my rant in regards to that. <laughs> yes. But if anything, everything went our way, I think. How about you? Took it, it took some time. It wasn't wasn't until just yesterday, um, on yes. the uh, seventh, uh, four five days after the actual uh, actual left election day when um, uh, we actually it got the call. announcement in the morning. I know because I got up, turned on MSNBC. Basically, MSNBC. I know some people might say something about biases, blah, 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 blah. Yes, it's true, but I just like them. That's just my preference, okay? You watch, you watch, okay. the, you watch, that's, Fox, that's you, fine. you watch whatever, I don't care. I'm watching MSNBC. <laughs> it ends up being that I just watch, it just goes onto my TV and is on there okay. all day, which is weird for me because I'm not one to watch. <laughs> news and political stuff but for some reason this mm -hmm. this situation was important to me besides the fact that even um, for work because I work on YouTube TV <laughs> mm -hmm. I kind of have to watch some of this stuff um, mm -hmm. I didn't work during the actual uh, uh, election coverage the marquee for the, the original election because I was off by the time that started um, uh, on Tuesday, but um, the days after, I ended up watching the uh, post-election coverage uh, for work for four hours each day for the last two days. I volunteered. It was fine. Um, and it was just interesting to watch everything come in and watch the commentary and... Mm -hmm. And everything. I thought this was an interesting election, and I almost feel like this was. This felt more like, for some reason, this felt like more of an election to me, because of the time that it took for for results to come in. That because of such an important thing, and making sure that so many people could could get to vote, I would think that because of all. The, the votes that would be coming in that we would take some time and it's not something where the president elect is determined on election day mm -hmm. while that's convenient to me it seems like it's like they're rushing it this didn't yeah. feel rushed well the reason one of the main reasons it wasn't rushed was because there was a large influx of mail-in absentee ballots that came in. And for some states, their local or state, you know, legislatures have pretty much indicated that they can't start counting votes until mm -hmm. election day. So that's one of the main reasons. Um, and, uh, but, you know, and again, we're living in a pandemic and a lot of people just chose not to vote in person. I know Jim and I didn't. Uh, we requested absentee ballots. We were able to get them, and we ended up dropping them off because we didn't feel 100% comfortable mailing them in. Um, but that was, you know, something we were able to do. Fortunately, um, some I think you've mentioned, Jeff, that you weren't able to request an absentee ballot. You kind of had to go in and yeah. vote. But but in person. also in tech in Texas, we have early voting. Yeah, so, so it doesn't mean that I had so you to vote early. Yeah, so you I didn't have that. to wait until. Mm -hmm. Election and day, Texas is the only state I know of that in some places you had drive up voting, mm. like drive through, like pull up, stay in your car, vote, keep on trucking. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. so room, room. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it, 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 it was a lot and i agree with you jeff that it it did feel um it felt like an election um i know a lot of people myself included were probably running through like all kinds of emotions going back and forth um doing our best to keep ourselves calm and just kind of holding out and waiting um you know there's obviously i think we all are in agreement like we want it the people who won who won to win 
Um, but it was there was obvious concern. You know, it it wasn't easy. It wasn't quick. It wasn't immediate. And while I felt that was necessary, it definitely did not help <laughs> on the, the mental side of things. You know, because. <laughs> It was, it was a rough several days. Um, I personally, well, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I, I, what I was going to say, Damon, is real quick. I think the part of the the roller coaster of emotions and psychology that people went through this week, that were hoping for the candidate that is now the president elect and vice president elect. I think the issue was is we did not have the blue wave, quote unquote, that some people mm -hmm. were waiting for or hoping or expecting. Like that, I think there was a. Sure. There, there was an expectation of, and I don't really want to use the the L word, but I think there was a, a a hope that there would be a landslide repudiation of this administration and this government and what they've done over the three plus years, and True. that didn't happen. And I think that's been the struggle that progressive individuals or individuals, I'll just group it this way: everybody that voted in the majority. I think are coming to terms with the fact that we still have currently 71 plus million individuals that voted to maintain the current status quo. Uh -huh. And I think that that had a bearing as well as to how people felt as each day went by, <laughs> like uh -huh. for real. Yeah. Seriously. And I will admit I'm one of those people like, um, that honestly was a little, I'm, I'm ashamed of the, the state I'm from. And I'm ashamed of the state I live in. Although while I live, like while while where I am from, like born and where I'm currently living, we're blue. <laughs> like if you look at the like larger maps and stuff, like Louisville, which is where I'm from, is was blue, but everywhere else and Louisville and Lexington were blue. Mostly everywhere else was red. And then here in Ohio, it was Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland and some other places, like a lot of the larger cities essentially um, were more progressive and more in favor of Biden-Harris. Mm -hmm. And, but overall the, you know, the rest of the the county yeah, or whatever the, kind of, And that's, yeah. that's the same it's, here. It, that's the same throughout the United States, really. A lot, yeah. a lot of the more urban areas like, uh, uh, the, the Austin area, the Dallas area, the Houston area, the San Antonio area, the four major major cities here in Texas, they're all blue. Uh, most of the uh, so southern tip of the uh, of Texas uh, was blue. Um, and I suppose part of that is because of you know it, the uh, the borders mm -hmm, the border mm -hmm, issue. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't like that. There was one county that's on the border that that was red, um, and I think this is true for most of the United States in general. Is if it's an urban area, most I know I'm sure there there were some that weren't, but most of them were were more the liberal, the Democratic um, uh, vote mm -hmm. versus the rural areas. Which one of the points that came up from the coverage that I saw was because of a incentive. Well, I'm not sure if it was incentive, but incentive that that Trump passed for just giving farmers money, <laughs> uh, just just giving them money. It was it wasn't even that like any specific issues is more like a stimulus sort of thing as well as i'm not sure if that's the right term uh to farmers is, ends up being one way for you know essentially kind of buying their vote because hey mm -hmm. he gave me free money you know um th that was one of the the thoughts about the more more rural mm -hmm. vote yeah so and obviously like here in texas i'm not surprised it's texas <laughs> I mean, I knew it yeah. was going to be be red, um, mm -mm. even even with my vote, because it, yeah. I mean, even with my vote, it would vote for for Biden Harris. It doesn't really count for for much because 
this county still went for Biden Harris. So, it, it, not saying my vote didn't count, but um, which county are you in, Jeff? Uh, I'm in Travis. And we're looking it up. Yeah, 70, well, seventy-one point four percent went to Joe Biden in Travis. So I'm looking around Austin to find Travis County. There, there's three. There's three counties that are blue. Mm -hmm. uh, Austin, uh, Travis is the middle one. Oh, okay. Oh, and when you were saying 71.4, I thought you were saying 71.4 went for for Trump. And I was like, wait, what? No, Biden. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, that, that was kind of one of the things uh, with us even. Let me pull up my lovely state. Um, I was not too happy um, with my county <laughs> for a while because we were uh, red and... I mean, not that I have any say so over my county, mm -hmm. but I was like, really? Like, that's <laughs> disappointing. And then we flipped on mm -hmm. Friday morning, I think it was. They announced that um, Erie County had, uh, you know, updated and that they had flipped it over to mm -hmm. blue. Yeah. So that made me feel happy. But, but Only it was because... a really close margin, it was just over 1% margin. Right. Well, as it stands right now, but the, I mean, that's that's sort of to be expected. And it's far more indicative of what I saw, like driving around. I have kind of felt a little bit that it was pretty balanced in the amount of representation for like mm -hmm. yard signs and and that kind of stuff. Um, for a little while, it felt like it was more um, for the current administration. And then like that's something I've seen online since the uh, since Pennsylvania was. Uh, by the AP and all the major news outlets, you know, they're all saying that, you know, the 20 electoral college votes for Pennsylvania will go to, you know, uh, elect Biden. And the interesting thing about that was, <laughs> for me, um, I was seeing this stuff online and people were like, I, the, the, I guess the response from the conservative side or those that were voting for the administration were like, where were all these people? Like, I didn't see them with bumper stickers and flags and hats and like merch or whatever. And I thought, girl, like not everybody's got to like wave a banner for their candidate. Yeah. Like, like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, you don't have to like, like be like, like look at me. <laughs> like, me, go. Well, part of, yeah. uh, part of the, the point of actually, you know, displaying your candidate is, is not, to communicate necessarily who you're voting for, but uh, to to put it more of of this is who I'm supporting, and if you support me, you should also be supporting this person. So it's it's kind of like a, a another kind of advertisement uh, 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 for for people to vote for your candidate. Mm -hmm. If you don't say it, they're not getting the message. Because the more people that would have have like Biden Harris or the more people that have Trump, you know, it, the more signs you have, you'd be like, oh, this place is going more for these people. Right. You know, I mean, it's still still the confidential votes. Well, you, you may get a number of your uh, ballots have signatures and such. When it comes to like when people are putting in the final one, those things are separated so uh, so you don't have to to say who you voted for and everything the right. only reason why you have signatures and all that shit is just to certify that you are eligible to vote that you only voted once right etc so well of all the years that i've participated in, in our like civil duty process of elections i actually got a yard sign this year oh. and i've never cared about getting one or, or any of that kind of stuff. But I really felt this year of all the years, like if I'm going to take a stand kind of and like make an announcement, this is it. So I waited until probably October, maybe end of September, mm -hmm. somewhere around there, maybe mid September. Once I knew the VP pick and where things were at, you know what I mean? And I felt pretty comfortable with that. 
because I'm just not a person who's like back all the way back in the primary is picking my candidate and blah, blah, blah. I'm just always like, really? Like, could we just sort this out and then figure out who the candidate is and then I'll like make, <laughs> you yeah. know, some, some support or whatever. So in this case, I waited until Harris was announced and then I was like, okay, I'm going to be supporting Biden Harris, but I want a Biden Harris yard sign. Like, mm -hmm. bitch, I want both names because <laughs> I want her to be recognized, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and so I went on their website and it was like $40 for a yard sign. And no offense, I ain't making that kind of coin. And <laughs> well, because my thought was I was discussing it with my guests, you know, or my host, I guess I'm staying with. And I said to them, if, if this shit keeps getting stolen from my yard, that's going to get damned expensive. To keep replacing that. I mean, yes, it's charity donation to the campaign, like, so that they can use it for advertising mm -hmm. or whatever costs and stuff. But at the same time, I was like, mm -mm, no. So instead, I went to the local Democratic Party website, found out that I could request one for free. Mm -hmm. And then I made them a donation that was less than that. <laughs> and they would, and they, and you tell them in the form where you want the sign. Ah. Like, in your yard so they'll come and do it you don't even need to be home or nothing and i wasn't i came home from work one day and boom it was in my yard and i was like well, look at that. <laughs> nice. so i didn't have to go pick it up or nothing That's um good to know hey, and hey. i and i i moved it a little bit because i have some shrubs like bushes mm -hmm. in front of the windows at my place and i didn't want when the landlord comes to grab to cut the grass to be bothered so i mm -hmm. moved it back into like kind of the dirt area next to the bushes so that way it was yeah. you know not gonna be an issue but ever since it went up i've been watching and waiting and like now that i'm gone for almost a week when i go home i'll be curious to see if it's still in my yard or not mm. yeah. if it's not i'm not going to be heartbroken about it um you know because it's already done over. Yeah. Well, effectively yeah so um but this is the first year like my point is that i actually like made a stand and yeah. let my neighbors know none of my neighbors had anything out um in the townhouses in the strip that I'm in or the next block down. Mm. Like, I think you had to go at least three to four blocks in any direction to see something. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I know it's been very interesting living on this side of the city um, and seeing, I've seen more Biden Harris signs and Biden signs this time or this year but I think maybe I was paying more attention to it. I don't know. It's hard for me to say. Um, it was funny. Um, the house at the corner, not uh, facing away from us, has a big flagpole. Not a big flagpole, but has a flagpole on their porch. And it, it is actually a Trump Pence um, flagpole. And I saw that and I was just like, oh, gross. But then literally like all around where I am, not us per se, but like two houses up, there's a Biden-Harris, the house on the basically on the flip um, the two houses actually on the opposite corners of the Trump house have Biden signs. So, and it just kind of keeps going, you know, you know, further and further down that. So I'm like, you know, cool. Good to I see. Um, I think we're good. Um, that, did that mean, I think I was kind of feeling the same way you were Gary, that you talked about earlier about like, I think there was a bunch of us expecting this, like surge or wave of, of blue um, on a lot of things. And I will admit, I guess I am disappointed that it didn't happen. Um, however, it does feel like it kind of happened. You know, um, Georgia of all places, I'll just, you know, just be point blank, honest to God, truthful. Um, I was not expecting that. Um, I don't know if anyone really, truly, I mean, maybe some people were, but uh, I was not expecting it. Because if you look, like, at the map, like, there's a very large section, um, like, coming down, from, I hate to say it, starting in Ohio and kind of going up or going down into the south and then going up into the Dakotas and over into um idaho and utah there's pretty much all this red like and right in the kind of like just the start of that the turn is georgia and surprise surprise it's 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 blue 
and not surprise, surprise. I think I think there has been run if off. what I've <laughs> it's too close to call. well, but well actually what I'm thinking is is that there's a lot of there's been a lot of action um, grassroots political you know action in like that state to kind of help. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Stacey Abrams mm -hmm. and 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 others in that area to kind of push for voting and push right. for people to vote and pushing for people to vote blue. So it's kind of like it's great to see that and great to hear that. Mm -hmm. And again, it is surprising. And I know we're still they're still counting, but right now they're at 99% reporting and it's very, very close. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but, it's like less than 0.2% or yeah. two point. Yeah. There's like a, just over 10,000, 10,000 yeah. vote difference. Yeah. So it's, but we'll right. see. Anyway, by the way, I, I'm, by the way, I'm looking at the MSNBC or the NBC news site. Mm -hmm. So just that, this is so that people know my source for all these. Uh, so Georgia's too close to call. Uh, North Carolina's too too close to call, and so is Arizona. Arizona currently is going blue. Georgia currently going blue. North Carolina currently going red. And mm -hmm. I, one thing I do want to bring up is is the interesting thing that I kind of notice a lot is that when we're talking about the candidates, Mike Pence never is really referenced at all. Why? Not that he ma that it matters so, so much that he, that he is, but it's always, it, it seems to be more of people saying it's the, it's they're voting for Biden Harris or Trump. <laughs> mm. it, it's not Biden Harris. And Trump Pence, it's Biden Harris, Trump. <laughs> well, and I think there's a very good reason behind that. Like mm -hmm. we were discussing uh, earlier today, where I'm at about the outcome of the the election so far, and what will happen in the next 73 days, as of when we're recording this, mm -hmm. and. I said, I wonder if the administration will just sit back and not do jack shit. Like, literally drag their feet and not do anything for a couple mm -hmm. months. Um, I have probably been in the wrong or the minority about that most people will feel. <laughs> that there's, oh no, they're going to do a whole lot of things uh -huh. with, within the next couple months. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm kind of feeling like, you know, if if, if someone's going to lick their wounds or whatever, you know. Um, you know, they can, they can take two months and be depressed. Uh, so, you know, and not really act out or anything anyways, mm -hmm. but, uh, the, the thing is, is that, um, I forgot where I was going with this. We, you know, we, we have an election process and we just wait. And I think that's what it is. I think Pence has spent almost four years flying under the radar the mm -hmm. entire time. I think he and mother like are not going to do anything to draw any attention any spotlight like let let the other one do that like let let them suck all the air out of the room let them pull that focus right let them do all of this stuff because that right there they just need to survive and in, in the event that something happens he needs to be at the ready to step in Mm -hmm. and i said i would not be surprised if in four years he considers running for president because now mm -hmm. he's been quote unquote vice president and mm -hmm. is far more palatable, I think, for conservatives after what's happened almost mm -hmm. four years now. Right. So right. I yes. think there's an intentional flying under the radar, like and keeping your face and your name out of everything. <laughs> your name out my mouth. Like I <laughs> but like is is I agree with that, Gary. I think that's part of it. It is a it is a very calculated potential plan to like because and just no offense but like Trump is pretty much you know has pretty much dominated domineer dominated everything going on like he says everything he talks too much he he 
has his hissy fits. He's on Twitter all the fucking time. He's doing all of this shit. And it is attention grabbing. I mean, it is and I think will at least for the next 70 something days will probably always be attention grabbing for the rest of us because that's who he is. He wants that attention, positive or negative. He wants that attention. Um, and Pence has, I, I agree with you 100%. Like, he has essentially been like, you go be crazy over there. I'm going to be over here keeping my mouth shut somewhat and, and, and just, you know, kind of laying back and paying attention and lying in wait. And obviously nothing's, I, well, you know, Nothing may happen in these next days, but should something happen, have happened, he was ready to, you know, move in. And I think he would have been a more definitive threat than, mm -hmm. than, because I think unlike Trump, he actually was a politician. He actually knows the the game and knows what's going on and can kind of work on that. And I think he would be calculated on what he did next. Mm -hmm. And I also agree with you that I think he will potentially run for election um, in within in the next you know four years. Mm -hmm. Or the the other side of it is just be like, I'm going to slip back into the shadows, go back to what I was doing. And be done, you know, and maybe make a move later on, you know, wait until the heat is kind of completely off. Because there's a pot, you know, there's also the possibility that, oh, God, I hope not, but that Trump may again try to run for president. I hope not. But then again, um, he might not be able to run for president when he's in jail. I don't know if he'll necessarily be certain in jail. I, I mean, we'll I, ne I never hold up the possibility that I won't be, but I'm not actually seeing that happen. I, I don't we'll say necessarily think he's doing the things that are unlawful. He, I mean, lying is not necessarily <laughs> against the law. In court, sure. But <laughs> usually, usually the lawyers will even make sure that you know everything is still considered lawful, if even if it's frivolous, uh, which is most uh, of what is reported. The lawsuits that that uh -huh. the Trump campaign have, have been throwing out. Um, but I, I'm not saying that it won't happen. I'm just saying I don't believe that it will. But that's personal opinion. Um, he's, he's just, he, he's going to do what the coronavirus virus of course did not do, which he will actually fade away, uh, into, uh, from, from politics. Um, honestly, if, if Pence had won, was the presidential nom nominee, uh, and won in 2016, we probably wouldn't be in this sort of debacle. <laughs> sure, not a really great guy for for us, especially the L L LGBTQIA plus uh, community. But because he's so familiar with the the uh, presidential uh, pro or uh, political process, it probably would not have been as much of a clusterfuck. Uh, as it was would have been with it but that's hindsight 2020 sort of thing mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah. but I, I think the big thing here I, I think one of the big things is 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 that it really became came like my my original point of that biden harris versus trump versus you know, Pence, it's not necessarily that Pence was just kind of like fading into the background. It's more of, I think people were focusing on the fact that we have this, that this team of people and, and plus Biden also, like even in his victory speech yesterday, he, he 
welcomed uh, uh, Camilla and Doug into the Biden family. You know, it, he wanted to that he would. It was not. He was not running this ticket as just me for president. And this is my vice president. He's like me and Kamala Harris. It's mm-hmm. it's it's a team effort. He really wants to be very much a team. And one of the things that I really liked. And maybe we should transition into uh, his victory speech from last night. And even uh, um, Vice President-elect Harris's uh, uh, speech yesterday, where it really communicated that he's sure he came as a Democratic nominee, but he wants to not be the Democratic president. He wants to be the American president. Yeah, and, and focusing is like, I'm not here just for the people who voted for me. I'm here for everyone in the United States, whether they mm-hmm. voted, they voted against him, they voted for him. Everybody he wants to be a a good president for, and having that, I think his big big message on there was about unity. That we are the United States of America. Key keyword there is united and trying to mm-hmm. that he may be more centrist and i think that's one of the reasons why he got the uh, democratic nomination was because he's much closer to the center than he is to the left uh which the other which bernie sanders is like far left <laughs> um it, that was one of the reasons why he did it. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I was watching that. Um, I was watching that on TV and I couldn't help but like get choked up. <laughs> I, I had tears welling up in my eyes. It was like the only word that I could really describe is I felt hope. Uh-huh. And it was just, I'm not one to get emotional at a lot of things and I got emotional uh during his mm-hmm. speech. It was yeah. it was so uplifting to me. Uh, how did did you go did but you you watch the uh speech? I did not. Um um but I have, you know, again I people a lot of friends you know were watching it and talking about it and posting things from it and videos from it and it's on twitter and everything else um i think first of all it's great to have someone that can speak in complete sentences yes that is a read um um, there's a fan because I read that <laughs> online last night on Twitter. The, the it was exactly that read, and it was short and sweet, and it said complete, period, sentences, period. That's all it said, and it was a response to Biden's speech. Yeah, and I, it, <laughs> I was like, yeah, 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 yeah it oh, says oh, oh, yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does, and I think, but I also agree, Jeff, that it it was meant to be inspirational. It was meant to inspire that hope. And there is a strong, I I hope, I believe anyway, there is a strong desire from this new, the president and vice president elect to bring change. Um, I feel like they have it within them. It may be possible, but I'm also going to be, I'm going to throw on the realistic hat, you know, you know, reality hat now and be like, other things need to change too. And it's not going to, it can't just be them. Right. Like we we have got to, yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be the, the big thing, Mm -hmm. which is the next step essentially. Um, Cause president can, can only do so president and vice president can only do so much. President in particular can only do so much Mm -hmm. without a, without backing from the House and the Senate. Mm. Well, it, and one uh, of the things that, that, uh, that Biden has, has said f- frequently uh, during this campaign is 
No, they, he's not going to be able to fix everything during his term in office. Mm -hmm. But he can get things rolling. Yeah. That's he can, he can start things. And he, he knows there are things that we can do now, such as actually starting a real coalition in regards to this fucking pandemic. Um, that, you know, one that the president actually attends more than once, like in a blue moon <laughs> and, and stays up on, uh, someone yeah, who no. d believes in science that that's trying to advance our society yeah. instead of, uh, you know, trying to pull it back into the dark ages of the, of the, uh, uh, United States. It, mm -hmm. it's. He knows that he can start and get things, that there are things that will not happen. He will not be able to, to promise will, will happen during, during his, but it doesn't mean mm -hmm. he can't, you know, get the process Try. starting, getting, getting people into that conversation from both sides of the aisle of trying to uh, get into a yeah. better place for, for healthcare, especially during this pandemic making sure that that the pandemic is being taken care of that we're not the worst country when it comes to to covid infections but we are uh, which is kind of his primary focus to begin his administration because i don't know about you this is like disaster a uh, 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 situation a worldwide disaster but even even worse here in the united states and uh, but everything else like uh, working on trying to improve the health care system in the united states uh working on uh, e things that that are very on both sides trying to find that happy medium he can get the ball rolling on finding that that happy medium that everybody is going to be happy with and uh, and get there it might not happen during his administration, but he can at least start making steps towards it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, he doesn't make the promises like, I promise I'm going to start these things. He doesn't promise that it's going to necessarily happen, but at least get the ball rolling that the next, the next administration, hopefully in eight years, <laughs> um, it will, will just pick up on and just continue on until we actually finally get into that that perfect harmony uh in and be that big united states prop, prosperous nation that we lead by example uh for the when it comes to the rest of the world that we participate with the rest of the world in in appropriate issues uh another thing that uh, Biden has, has pointed is trying to uh rejoin uh, the world health organization i don't know why even the reason why we ever left that was weird but a and uh all, all the others i can't remember off the top of my head but uh it just it, it's just that message where he he stays real in what he can do doesn't make promises that things will absolutely be done but that he can start the work to to get the ball rolling. Sorry, I keep blabbing on. I think this is a first. <laughs> what? That you're talking? <laughs> that I'm talking so much. Well, I mean, it's fair in a sense because of, I think, the three of us, you were the one that kind of, like, listened to the speeches and you've been probably picking, keeping the most attention. Like, you've been watching, MS, you said MSNBC, you know, you know, for a while. So you kind of have a little bit more, I will say you probably have a lot more information. I'm happy with what is going on. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I'm happy that he, you know, Biden and Harris won. I'm super happy about that. I'm, um, I think for me personally, I am keeping the, the, the logical analytical side of me is, is not yet ready to for lack of a better word, unclench, <laughs> as it were. I'm, I'm, there's 
there are things that could potentially still go wrong. And I'm not I'm not saying that it will, but there are still potentially things that could go wrong. There are mm. so many things that could potentially happen. Um, I don't think it's going to be enough, which is why we've pretty much made the, the estimates that we've made, the country or those have made those estimates. But there are things going on. Trump has been indicating left and right that he's, you know, suing country or countries. Woo. You know, suing states and and trying to get things done and recounted and all that shit. He's not gonna go. Qu- he's not gonna go quietly. Mm. Uh, he's not gonna concede. Like, if he concedes, I will. I will probably pass out. <laughs> if I hear like Trump has conceded, I will like fall to the floor, fate, because I will be in total shock. Because I would never expect that to happen. Mm. It's Me not after. in his nature. It'll be me after finding out the results of the 2016 election. Exactly. I was just like, eh. yeah. It would. It what? would be. I would be in shock. Huh? I would what? be in shock if he actually conceded. Like, just to be honest, Frank. Like, it. It would be a total shock to me. Um. Yeah, it's not a requirement. I, it's a. It's been a yeah, tradition, but it's not a requirement for for. Yeah, I know it's not a requirement, but it would be it would it would be nice. It would be nice, but I doubt it's going to happen. Anyway, um, having said that, um, like you said, I I'm happy that Biden is being honest about what he can and can't do. You know, again, he's only going to be able to do so much, and a lot of that's going to depend on what happens with these next, you know swing elections are these, you know, crucial Senate and House seats that are, you know, still in place. Um, That's going to affect what does happen next. Um, And, you know, on the other side of things, we still have other problems in this country. And that's not going to be a solve overnight. You know, one of the big things I've been hearing, and I'm kind of glad, is it's great that all these people are out and um, like celebrating and whatever about everything that's been going on. But like, you do realize there's still a pandemic, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Like there's still a pandemic going on. Mm -hmm. So like, like while it's great to celebrate and I'm seeing some people in masks and some of these things and all that stuff, but like we really shouldn't be congregating so close together with people we don't know. Like we really shouldn't be. Um, yeah, like it, it, any other year seeing these celebrations would be amazing. Yeah. Me, I'm, yeah. I'm like, hey, this is amazing. But this probably isn't a good idea. Mm-hmm. And I know these, a lot of these may not have... be spreader events, but there's there may not be super spreader events, but they could be possibly be spreader events. Yeah, the election and was not a good. <laughs> this election was it, not good for a COVID situation. Like this was not the, like the pandemic is still around. There are still issues with like you know L- the LGBT community. There are still issues with racism in this country. There are still problems that are still here. And just because we happen to get a new blue president and vice president does not mean that all of that has gone away. Like, that's kind of the big thing. Like, like it's not gone away. It's still here. There's still a pandemic. We still don't have a cure. We still don't have a, a, a vaccine. None of that is, you know, even, you know, there yet. So while we can take this moment to celebrate I and, and hopefully celebrate safely, like, we do need to take you know, take the time to celebrate, but then, like, this fight isn't over yet. Um, We still have stuff to do. Um, You know, we've come very far, but we still have a little bit and a lot further to go. Mm So, like, definitely, like, yeah, there's still work to be done. And it's not, again, like, I agree with you and what Biden said about, like, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not probably not going to happen in four or eight years. Um, but he can start. It can start. The work can kind of hopefully get going and maybe we can keep pushing forward. Mm. 
here. I think that's fair. No, I mean, it's, I'm holding reservation. You know, we've got we've got just over two months to get to when President Elect Biden. Apparently, I was reading stuff online today. Already has a whole series of things set up for um, uh, executive orders to reverse things that have been undone in this current administration to rejoin the world health organization to, you know, rejoin the United nations to, you know, signing the Paris accord agreements again. I mean, just like, and I said, how awkward that the president elect was the vice president in the administration before all this happened. So it's kind of like you move him back into your house and you're like, bitch, why the fuck do you paint this room? This color it's <laughs> ugly. Yeah, and just like nope, nope, nope. We're taking it back to what it was. Thank you very much. Don't take time. Let's, for this. let's let's re remove this wallpaper. Let's get this like shit. Move those fucking ugly ass decorations out of this fucking room because that they clash with everything else that's going on in here. Like get 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 her and him and him and that out. <laughs> like, just and and, and so I wouldn't be surprised if it, I wouldn't be surprised if if. If Biden's like, okay, one of our first things to do when when we start here is everybody that works at the White House, we need to look at a work from home situation. <laughs> so, the the interesting thing was someone posted on Twitter and it made me laugh. It said, "What is it?" They said, "Surely they're replacing all the toilets in the White House because who wants to sit where that man shat?" Ooh. Like, I mean. People have been pretty vicious. <laughs> like some of the things I've if you're read, replacing like, the, If you're replacing the toilets, can you just replace them to what, with ones with bidets? I mean, that will save you <laughs> a shitload of toilet paper. Let me just say that. Yeah. No pun intended. Uh, um, uh, yeah. The, it's, uh, it's, it's one of these intriguing things. But I was like, of, of all the things to reset, like of all the people, of all the staff, that'll be interesting. Um, it is said on Monday, tomorrow... Uh, November 9th, that Biden is expected to reveal who his Corona uh, COVID-19 task force is going to be uh, mm -hmm. comprised of initially. Um, there's this like I was reading an article today, I think, from The Washington Post about how his campaign tracked everything that he said he was going to do and wrote it into a three ring binder and has been for the past two months strategically looking at how to make all these things happen and mm -hmm like work them into the beginning of, of steps and things like that, which I found very interesting. Wow. So um, yeah, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to wait and mm -hmm. see how, how things go. Um, but as uh, you know, so far I'm, I mean, I'm pleased. I do think uh, with recounts or whatever that um, two of the remaining four States will um, end up giving their electoral college votes to the president elect. Um, in the end, it will be affirmatively both popular vote and electoral college, and that will that will be that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, twelve years ago, we uh, saw the election of the first um, person of color into the highest office in the land, and got reelected four years later, and then. Um, as I've been saying the past couple of days, I really think that America had a reality check that we didn't know was coming, which is that there is racism in our country. There is bigotry. There is a lot of things that we were not aware of. Like we were kind of blissfully going along in our lives thinking everybody was on the same page. And then we found out, oh, oh, no, 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 not at all. There's, there's definitively people out there who are um, centrally minded is the way I've been describing it to a lot of folks. Like they're, you know, it's about me, mine and how I got mine and you can't tell me and it's like not your right and government, you know, doesn't need to be blah, 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 you know. And and while I can understand that from a political standpoint as like a, a philosophy as a, as a certain thing, um, it really is evocative when you compare to the other viewpoint, which is, you know what, like, we want to rise all ships together as the saying goes, like everyone has the same opportunities. Everyone has these standards, you know, imbued in them as their individual liberties, you know, to be able to have, you know, to make a living, to have, you know, medical coverage to, you know what I mean? Just um, things that, you know, are being considered universal human rights. 
And that's, you know, I see that that's probably going to still go on for a while, you know, but um, I, I think that's where a lot of my friends have been struggling with this whole, like, I just didn't know I had this many people in my family or my coworkers or my friends or whatever that are, you know, X, Y, Z. Like one of my best friends actually very interestingly, eloquently spent a lot of time talking to somebody and saying to this person who has been um, at a, at a current supporter of the, of the administration, do you not realize that by voting for this person, you are in endorsing all of the behavior? This mm -hmm. isn't about party. This isn't about conservative versus progressive. This is about this person's behavior is completely acceptable. Mm -hmm. That's They're what this great. was about. And yeah. I, you know, uh, found that quite interesting and a little refreshing, like to, like to distill it down to that, to be like, seriously, this isn't, this, this was not about politics. This was just purely about like a decent human being versus a not decent human being, mm -hmm. which is, you know, interesting standpoint. So yes, um, so I'm uh, okay with how things turned out. Um, I was not prepared for the amount of people that had apparently been psychologically and emotionally, um, I don't want to say traumatized, but like going through some stuff. Like I saw mm -hmm. lots of posts online about like, I feel like I can breathe. I feel like I'm waking up from a nightmare. Like, uh, I mean, just like lots of stuff, like people um, expressing this mm -hmm. pent up um i don't know like just like like this the strife um yeah. of living in a world that they feared for their personal safety that their marriage their like adoption of children their livelihoods i mean just like they felt like everything potentially was going to be on the line mm -hmm. and knowing now what we know they feel better um, mm -hmm. and it's not simply like they're like Whoa! girl Woo! white party yeah. Yeah. you know i mean yeah. it's not that at all um but i was just really surprised like i didn't realize how many people had been kind of holding that kind of stress i guess yeah and I, think it's, I agree i think it's you know fair that this the past four years or whatever have been rough have been full of strife and for those of us who could have things to potentially lose, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a definite, like, stressful, like, feeling, you know. Um, and while the election is not the be-all, end-all of that stress, it is in some ways comforting that for the most part, the majority is um, in agreement that it's time for a change and it's time to, to hopefully a change for the better and hope for a change for the better. And that does relieve some of the weight. Does it take all of it off the table? No. But right. are off your shoulders? No. But it does take a little bit off of it. You know, right. I don't have, to, I'm not concerned that within the next few months or within the next year or so, I'm, I'm, you know, we'll lose our, our right to marry. Just, I'm just throwing out as a potential example. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the feeling I think we're, we're having at this point. Um, and hopefully those smaller things will kind of start being chipped away and the weight will be taken away. Now is again, like it's not gonna, it's gonna take a while, but at least for now we have, as Jeff said, we have hope. Right. Yeah. That's a, a good start to it. So now just everybody think of the Superman symbol, <laughs> which is a Kryptonian symbol for hope. That's why we should, right. uh, should be. That's what we need for for a t-shirt, like a, a Biden thing. But anyways, I'm trying to make a <laughs> funny thing. Anyways, moving on. Uh, hey, folks, we're ringing, ringing low on time. This has oh. been the 
Oh, wait. David? I think we should probably say something because we haven't said it oh, all. Oh, episode. that's right. Uh, yeah. One very important thing. This is super important. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I will tell you this, that the uh, 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 one of our, our nightmares has, has been over actually for quite a while. It is perfectly legal for us to sing this, even though it is kind of a somber thing, as Trevor Noah has po pointed out at a time. Uh, Damon, will you join me? In one, two, three. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, dear Gary. Happy birthday to you. you. Happy birthday Girl, to Gary. <laughs> mm -hmm. you're, you're just mm -hmm. turning, Gary, you're just turning 30, right? Uh, no, I'm not ashamed of my age. I'm 47 now. Okay. Well, I was growing, trying to in, do growing the... into my daddy stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get them daddy points. Daddy Cub, Cub Gary. Hey, hey, I already told a cubby. He was like, you know, hope you have a good birthday. And I was like, when are you going to blow my candle? So. <laughs> 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 it, and their response was, but if I do that, you won't get your wish. And I was like, how do you know that's not my wish? You have much to learn. <laughs> you have much to learn, young Padawan. <laughs> And, and of course, uh, one uh, of my favorite things was was the glory of uh, 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 Skype and uh, David and I not being able to sing uh, in sync. But that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Of course story. not. I, I think that's <laughs> that, that's one of the great things with uh, 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 singing "Happy Birthday" is like there's always somebody out of sync. Uh, anyways, happy birthday to Gary. Happy uh, congratulations to the United States of America for getting Biden Harris voted into office. January, we got a lot of work ahead to us. We need to get out of here quickly. We got our heart out. So I'm going to do this very, very quickly. CubsOutLoud.com. CubsOutLoud at email, uh, gmail.com. Uh, 361-COL-TALK. 361-265-8255. Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube. You can find us at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place in the URL. Uh, our social chat, which somehow I had left at some point. And so now no longer an admin in it is at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're planning and recording these things at calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can buy merch such as the Cubs Out Loud hat or a um, a consensus by four play shirt over at zazzle.com slash the Cubs Out Loud. Become a patriot patreon dot Cubs Out Loud. Paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud if you just want to send us a donation. Um, and you can. Uh, Rate us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can find us on Google, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, and uh, over on Amazon. And I think that includes Audible. Um, and you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Up, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Subsea or Other, and Wind Gem on Twitch on Sundays for some B and D. Damon. I am Theater Cub79 on most bear related sites and on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umber on Twitter. Um, the Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you could pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.